Good morning, everyone. So the, the agenda for today. So we've done the PC checkup. We're doing the getting started now. Um, in a bit, I'll do something on the positioning of the MP1. So what are the objectives for today? Um, understand what the MP1 is. Obviously, it's a new product from ST. Um, in a way, it's a new venture uh, because it's, we're going away from microcontrollers to microprocessors. So understand a bit about how that fits into our portfolio, how it might fit into your projects. Um, it says to get confident with moving to this platform and the ecosystem. So obviously this is just a, a very quick whistle stop tour of the, of the ecosystem and, and getting familiar where to find things. But there's a whole lot more you can do offline after this to, to get more familiarity with it. And so getting started, uh, with the host setup, with your PC setup, making sure you've got something that you can actually go away and play with, and knowing where to find more information. That's kind of one of the key things of today. Okay, so I'm going to have a quick uh, bit of a play with the board, just so we'll make, one, to make sure the hardware works, um, two, make sure all your cables are working. We only need one at the moment for this particular part. The second Type-C cable, so the one that's a Type-C to Type-C, you only need that for one lab later on in the day, unless you're using it for the power. You might have chosen to do C to C as your power cable. Um, but the second type C you don't need until one of the labs, and you only need it for one lab only. Um, so don't worry about lack of USB ports, and if you've not got a type C to type C, I do have some adapters to convert that to a type A. So I'm gonna have a quick look at uh, what we've given you in front of, uh, in respect to the hardware. So the board that we've given you is the MP157C-DK2. So it's one of our discovery boards, uh, and it's the top of the range with the graphics module included. So Chris will cover the rest of the, uh, the family and the kits later on. In this particular kit, we have a Wi-Fi and Bluetooth module somewhere on the board. You can see your big DSi panel on the front. You've got the gigabit Ethernet and HDMI. So, so that makes up the bulk of the kit and inside software wise running we've got our starter package and other Chris will explain about the starter package later on as well uh, in the morning. So, so that's what you've got bundled in and that should already be pre-programmed into your target board. So if you lift the screen off and had a look underneath you'll see the MPU in the middle with the, uh, the memory chip. We have a PMIC to do all the power management sat there on the board. Um, your power connector is the one that's down next to the Ethernet socket. So the type C next to your Ethernet socket is providing you your power. You've got four USB sockets on the opposite side. So you'll be using these um, later on in the day with the memory stick uh, that we'll hand out again later on in the day. The second type C there, as I say, we need for this one lab in the afternoon. And the ST link, you will be using um, pretty much in every lab during the day for your terminal window. So you can see what's going on in your target board. So that'll be providing the terminal interface uh, into the Linux that's running on your discovery kit. And your Wi-Fi module's just up here in this top corner is where your Wi-Fi module sits. For the buttons and LEDs, there's a collection of LEDs on both sides of the boards. Uh, the reset button you will be using on and off during the day, so we will ask you to reset your board every now and then um, so that we can see certain things happen. So, and reset is the black button. So, rather than you try and read the silk screen, uh, there should be three blue buttons and one black button down there on the underside of your board. If you turn the board over, you'll see your Arduino connectors, so you can always um, put add on shields on. Uh, and when we give you out the memory sticks in the extra material somewhere else, there is a, a demo for adding an add-on shield. So it's one of the MEMS add-on shields you can put on it. So there's some extra material to cover that. The SD card, which is where we're storing our Linux image. So that's uh, what we're running from, is our SD card. And then you've got the boot pins as well. So we'll explain what the boot pins do. We won't be playing with them during the day, uh, but we will explain what they do. Um, during one of the uh, hands-ons or one of the theory sessions. So to get started, you need to make sure your boot pins are set to the on position. You've connected your ST-Link cable. You've connected your power cable and your SD card is plugged in correctly. 
and hopefully you boot your board up you should see our demo launcher as it's called so as i say you only really need the one type c at the moment which is the power one for this particular lab uh, but you can always plug in the st link it won't do any harm further than that one in. so you can click on some of the icons that uh, you've got on this screen so i have the board here so I'll do the easy option, so I'll pull out my HDMI and I'll plug my HDMI in. So hopefully it should now transfer onto the screen. So hopefully you should be seeing this screen on your uh, target board. Uh, shouldn't take too long, um, you'll get nothing probably for about three or four seconds when you power it up. So your power is the one next to the Ethernet socket. Uh, then eventually you should see a blue LED come on. Uh, and if it starts flashing, then that's a good sign. That means your Linux is working. So at the moment, mine is, I've got a blue LED flashing and a red LED flashing because I've not got my ST link plugged in. So rather than me trying to struggle and uh, see exactly where the icons, icons are on the screen, I'm going to plug in my USB mouse into one of my sockets, just purely so I can see a mouse. And because it's Linux, it just works. You plug a mouse in on USB, it works. So, so you can go along and click on any of the icons. So if you click on the 3D cube, you get your nice 3D cube. You can drag him around the screen if you want, things like that. So it's just a fairly basic one using all the, uh, the graphical functions that we've got. So if you click anywhere outside that box, double click outside the box or outside the cube, it'll back you off to the main menu. Now, again, I have a USB webcam, so I'll plug that in. And if I click on my camera icon, there we go. I have a nice picture of the audience. There we go. So I also have a Bluetooth speaker. So I'll click on my Bluetooth link. I'll switch my speaker on. Come up. So I'll put it into pairing mode and I'll start a scan. Yep, there we go, a Bravent. I'll say connect. There we go, so it says it's connected. And now I should be able to play a video and I should get some audio coming through hopefully. There we go. So again, you can play video, you can connect any uh, Bluetooth device to it as well. So again, the Linux just gets you up and running, it automatically connects to anything else. And the final demo is the AI demo. So this one's now utilising the Cortex M4 as well. So it's taken our um, xcube-ai package, if you've seen that before, a few, I've gotten a few nods. So that's running in our Cortex M4 inside the device. So that's doing the character recognition. So the graphical side, the A7 side, will be sending the information over for which characters come in to the M4. It'll do the interpretation and send the response back to the uh, A7 side. So that's what you've got included inside the board. So when you buy a board yourself, um, you get all those particular features embedded inside your target board. So to help you out when you're doing your developing, we have uh, what's called the wiki. So we'll be referring to this on and off during the day, and we'll show you a few more slides of it later on uh, in the morning. It tells you everything about this board, how to get up and running and start with the board, how to play around with it, and it'll go into a lot more detail for the development side. So we'll show you a bit more about the wiki um, as we go through the day. But that will be your biggest place for gaining information. So you've got the sd.com with all the documents, but the wiki's got all the guides and more of a detailed explanation of exactly what's going on. So we'll highlight a bit more in the wiki later on in the day. 